And good morning from the back porch here in the Sedona area of Arizona. It's volume two of the back porch sessions. And if you've been here before, you know the drill. Jump in the comments. Don't be a lurker. Engage. Life is about intentional engagement. Jump in. Don't be a lurker. Come in. Share your name, at least your first name, your city, your state, your town, where in the world you're joining us from. By the way, if you can't hear me for some reason, let me know. And this is very important. One thing, throw one thing in the comments, just one thing you're grateful for today. And you know why that's so important? If you listen to your friends on social media, if you listen to the media, if you listen to that damn in the news box on LinkedIn or whatever, Twitter, whatever social network you are on, they would have you believe that the world is the worst it's ever been. And if you are a student of history like me, you know that's complete bullshit. So let's fight back. Let's push back. Let's start a gratitude chain. What's at least one thing you're grateful for today? And you're going to hear me repeat that and repeat that request throughout this broadcast because starting your day with gratitude sets you up for abundance instead of scarcity. All those people in the world, all those people in your circle, all those people on social media, the social media companies, they're the cynics. They're what I like to call the scarcity pimps. They want to bring you down. They want to make you think everything is bad. You know why? Because they want to prey on your fear. And when you are fearful, you click. When you are fearful, you are stuck to that screen. When you are fearful, you are their victim. You are their prisoner. They want to sell you ads. But you know what else happens when you're fearful? You get infected with their scarcity virus. And when you get infected with that scarcity virus, you know what? You wake up in the morning and you think, the world is going to hell in a handbasket. It's not true. Things are better than they've ever been. This world is full of abundance. So what's one thing you are grateful for today? Put it in the comments. Joe Miller from Houston, Texas. Welcome, Joe. What's one thing you're grateful for today? Dave Quinn. Man, Texas is in the house. I'm happy to be in the Southwest here. We're in the Sedona area of Arizona. What's up, Kurt? Super Dave from Frisco. I'm grateful for my mastermind group. Mastermind groups are incredible. By the way, if anyone here wants to know about a mastermind group, join the Freedom Inner Circle, freedominnercircle.com. I will put it in the comments here. I actually charged my computer this week, so you know what? You know what that means? Hey, Tim Williams, Dr. Tim, Augusta, Georgia, you are on my call list because I have someone that would like to meet you. Um, I was actually going to call you yesterday. I ran out of time. I am going to give you a ring on Monday, Tim, if you're around. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Steven, my daughter's smile. Bahaiho. Bajaiho? Bahaiho. I'm probably butchering your name, but grateful for my daughter's smile. Grady Gibbs, are you here? That's Joe Miller. Joe Peachy, Joe, what's one thing you're grateful for today? Joe is in Orlando. He is my sales mentor. He helps me sell. Sales is not a bad word. Guess what he also teaches me to do? Use the phone. Guess what? The phone is not a bad word either. I'm going to digress on the phone here for a little bit, but usually the people who tell you the phone don't, don't work, doesn't work, are the people who are scared of using the phone. And so they rationalize it, right? Or they're people who are selling you outbound tools or inbound tools, and they'll tell you the phone doesn't work. I totally digress. Um, let's see, who else is joining us here? We got, all right, great, Tim. I like to call you Dr. Tim. You earned it. Who else is here? Fired Up Business is great. Listen, as you join us, there are going to be people joining us throughout this podcast. Name, city, state, town, where in the world you're joining us from, at least one thing you're grateful for today. I'm here on my coffee. Maybe you got fired up. It is 6.05 a.m. here in Arizona, 9 a.m. Eastern. Happy to spend this time with you today. My entire family is sleeping right now. It's nice and cool here. Maybe I'll go for a hike today. For those of you who don't know, my wife and I sold our home and most of our possessions. We took our kids on the road. We're living our freedom lifestyle. It's our freedom lifestyle. It might not be your freedom lifestyle, but just know this. And this goes into the first topic today. You see it right there. Fuck the how. Excuse my language. I know I have a potty mouth, but some people need to be woken up in the morning. Some people need to be woken up in their life. And here's what I mean by that. I'm going to tell a story that I just came up with. So we have this beautiful creek behind us, Oak Creek. And this morning I was watching a little beaver. There's a little beaver that swims in the creek, right? And he goes fishing. Well, guess what? This morning the beaver didn't wake up and say, oh, I got to go. I got to go catch fish. 
and maybe hit the snooze bar because, oh, they started thinking about how they're going to catch the fish. And the beaver's so tired, right? Oh my gosh, how am I going to catch the fish? What if there's no fish? It's going to be so difficult. I'm going to have to swim. I'm going to have to step, think about step three, four, and five, right? Beavers and animals don't think of that. It's innate. They wake up and they just do. As Joe Peachy, who's here watching, likes to say, they're dumb and excited, right? But you know what? We humans, we like to overcomplicate everything. And what we like to do is focus so much on the how we're going to get there that we don't even define the what. We don't even define where we want to go. So we sit in bed and we think, you know, for that beaver, oh my gosh, it's going to be so tough. I don't know. What if I don't catch any fish? How am I going to catch the fish? What if I swim around for an hour and there's no fish? So we don't even define what we want to go do. So we don't even do it. He shirts up. Exactly what you see on the screen here. Fuck the how. Excuse my potty mouth. I'm sorry. Not sorry because people need to get woken up. If your how gets in the way of you defining your what, guess what? You're never going to define your what. And if you don't define your what, you're never going to get there. Let's say there's 10 steps to get there. We don't even define where we want to go because we're so worried about step three, four, and five. It's going to be difficult. I don't know how to do it that we don't even take the first step. As Lao Tzu says in the Tao Te Ching, the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step, but we don't, even, we don't even start taking those steps because we're so worried about the how. So take that how, flush it down the toilet. I'm not saying the how's not important. I'm process oriented, but if we don't define what we want to do, I had a webinar this week, Freedom Business Blueprint, and there are some people, it's, it's easy to do that get so focused on how I'm going to build a business. What's step eight and nine? That they don't even define the type of business they want to build. And so you know what they do? They build a business that's not profitable or they build a business that is more like a prison than a business. They don't define who they want to serve. They don't reverse engineer it to figure out how am I going to serve those people? What's the positive impact I'm going to provide? All they start with is the how, the how, the how. They throw stuff up on social media, on Twitter, on Facebook, on LinkedIn. Then they say, it doesn't work. Well, they haven't defined the type of business they want to build. Hell, many people don't define the type of life they want to live. They're so focused on how they're going to get there. Oh my gosh, it's so tough. I don't even want to think about it. So fuck the how. Take it, flush it down the toilet, throw it in this creek right behind my yard. Define the what. Reverse engineer it. That's how you come up with the how. And you take those small steps every day to get there. Otherwise, you know what you're going to do? Like most people, you set those big, hairy, audacious goals and you're so focused on them and they're so tough that you never take those steps. And so it comes to be like December 15th. You're like, well, wait till next year. You got to define those big, hairy, audacious goals, reverse engineer them so you know the outcomes you need to achieve every month, every week, and every day. And then forget about those goals and focus on today. Focus on the process today. Focus on today's how instead of that, oh, that big goal. Because that can be so big, it can paralyze us. So thank you so much. Let's see. We got a lot of comments here. We don't create our vision or what. So true. We got to define it. We got to define it. This isn't metaphysical. It's like define what type of business you want to build, right? I had a seven-figure PR and ad agency that three and a half years ago, I shut down. You know why? My health sucked. I was 60 pounds heavier. I was on a cocktail of prescription drugs that the doctor said I had to be on. I wasn't an epic dad. I wasn't an epic husband. And I woke up one morning. I hadn't defined the type of business I want to build. And you know what? I made a ton of money, but I was killing myself. And if I hadn't shut down that business, started over and built the runway for the type of business I wanted to build, guess what? When COVID hit, I would have lost all my clients. I know that because I know many of my clients fired all their consultants. And guess what? I wouldn't have mentally, physically, spiritually been able to deal with it. God knows what would have happened to me last year. But because I said, listen, I had built a business without the what. I focused solely on the how, and I made a lot of money. And guess what? I will tell you right now, if you have a million dollars and I have a million dollars, if I have a million dollars and you have one dollar, guess what? At the end of it, that million dollars is all going the same place. It's not coming with us. Our earthly bodies are going in the ground. We're the same. It's going to be the equaling. So I don't care how much money you have. And I'm not saying money's not important. I'm a free market capitalist, but guess what? In the end, if you spend your entire life trying to race to get as much money as possible and you ignore your relationships, you ignore your self-care, you ignore your what, you are going to hit a wall. I know some people who hit their walls when they're 70. I know some people who hit that wall and the realization of it when they're on their deathbed. Guess what? I want you 
to wake up today, to be aware, start defining your what, reverse engineer it and don't let the how get in the way. Let's see, we're gonna go to the comments here. We have a lot of awesome people here today. Steven, right? Steven's from New York. Welcome, Steven. Tim, I'll give you a call on Monday. Joseph, of course, is grateful for his friend, Grady Gibbs, aren't we all? Hosam from New Jersey, welcome. What are you grateful for? What's one thing you're grateful for? Joseph Miller, Joe, get your head out of the, out of the gutter talking about your beavering. Steven, or Stefan, sorry, negative predictions are the cause of anxiety and stress. That's a great point. If we sit there and we're paralyzed and just focused on that how without taking action. Listen, action is a wonderful cure for a lot of things. You know, it's easy when fear grips us to sit in the corner, suck our thumb and go in the fetal position. And when that happens, we don't take action. So the anxiety builds and builds and builds. And then the guilt comes in. We're not taking action. We're not moving. Guess what? Get up off your ass. Get up off the couch and start taking action. Don't focus so much on the how because that builds fear. Listen, I'm, I'm coming up and I'm going to do a podcast mini series. We have the great Bob Berg, by the way. He sold, I don't know, 5 million books of the Go-Giver series. We have Randy Gage, multiple New York Times bestseller. We have career strategist, neuroplasticity uh, expert, Aaron Urban going to be joining us. We have a number of other people joining us for a podcast mini series called Fear, Love, and Creativity. Creativity is our greatest weapons as human beings. And I'm not talking about just art and writing. If you build a business, that's your creative flow working. Hell, if you're growing right now, this beard is my creative flow. It's innate. I don't have to think about it. If you have kids, whatever it is, creating your life is your most powerful weapon. But guess what? When you have fear, the cortisol courses through your veins, fight, flight, or freeze, you paralyze. And when you operate out of fear, we've seen this a lot over the last year, guess what? You make decisions. You think it's safety, but you're actually hurting yourself and those around you because you're dumber when you're paralyzed by fear. But guess what? When you allow your decisions to be made from love, from a place of love, and I'm not talking about namby-pamby love and oh, this and that and hugging and all that. Create love, a love for life, a love for the world, a love for people around you. Guess what? Instead of the cortisol, there's a little chemical called oxytocin that flows through your body. It loosens you up and allows you to be more creative. It allows you to step back, see the playing field and create based on love to help other people, to help yourself. Not out of a sense of pride or vanity. It just freaking happens. So you'll announce, maybe I'll announce it next week. Fear, love and creativity. Mini podcast mini series coming up. We have some incredible guests who are going to be on that. Now, before we move to our next topic, I want to give a shout out. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Joseph. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, everyone who is here. If you are just joining us, jump in the comments. Don't be a lurker. Be intentional. Be engaged. Your name, your city, your state, your town, your location, where in the world you're joining us from, and at least one thing you are grateful for. I'm a free market Buddhist. That's a wonderful thing to be. Joe Peachy's going to go sell. Hey, that's wonderful. Larry from Connecticut, great to see you again. Grateful for my daily walks in the woods. That's wonderful. Greg Beavers. Let's see, as you join us, as anyone joins us here, please don't hesitate to jump in. So that first topic is taken care of. And by the way, across the bottom of the screen here, you see text you 30 to 55678. Guess what? If you do that, I want to give you free stuff. If you text that number, guess what? You will magically be sent a link. And in that link is some free stuff. Right now, there's three free webinars, and I'm, I'm adding a new one this next week. Right now, the free webinars are the four pillars of the authority brand, leveling up on LinkedIn, and using podcasts to build your authority brand. In addition, you could subscribe to the Authority Brand Podcast. And if you want help, if you would like to learn how I can help you become more purposeful, productive, and prosperous, guess what? There's a link to schedule a call with me. And right now, I'm actually going to put that link in the comments right now. You know why? Because some of you, if it's worth 20 minutes, I'll help you out. So let's move to the next topic, which is your why and your clients. Why there's a lot of talk about your why and your why is important. We talked about that. 
You're so worried about the how that you don't define your what. You don't define your why. Your why is important, but guess what? Your clients aren't going to buy because of your why. With all due respect to Simon Sinek and some people, I posted this and they argue because they're Simon Sinek fans. I'm a Simon Sinek fan and that's great. But he makes the case that people are going to buy from you because of your why. And I respectfully disagree. Your why is important. Your why should fuel you. Your why should fuel why you're building your business, the type of business you, you build. But guess what? Your clients want to know what's in it for them. Maybe you've heard me talk about this before. But when you go up to your client and you're so focused on your why that you verbally vomit all over your client, you tell them all about why you're building your business, how wonderful your business is. Oh, it's all about my journey. Guess what? Your clients don't give a shit. They want to know what's in it for them. They may love you as a human being. They may have empathy for you. Hey, they're going to go golfing with you out to dinner. That's wonderful. But guess what? You're asking them to give you their hard-earned money. They want to know what's in it for them. So yes, your why is important, but you have to align your why with your client's why. One of the four pillars of building an authority brand is alignment. And this is what it's all about. So if you spend your entire time, listen, sharing your journey is important. And if you do that as a therapeutic exercise, more power to you. But in the end, that may get you a lot of likes and views. And oh my gosh, I'm going to talk about my struggle and everywhere I've been. Hey, share it, share away, more power to you. But what I'm saying is people are going to buy from you, not simply because of your journey and where you've been and your experience and your bells and your whistles and your features. They're going to buy because they want to know what's in it for them. You're creating value. You're creating impact. You're offering impact. You're offering exponentially more impact than they're paying you. So align your why with their why. That is so important and don't lose sight. A lot of people start working with me and they say, all right, well, let's talk about the, the, what, the products I'm going to offer and how I'm going to offer it. No, let's talk about the who. Let's start with who is your ideal client? Who is that person who wants the unique and fulfilling impact that you provide? Let's start with the who. All sales, all branding is person to person, P to P, forget the B to B and forget the B to C. A person buys, a person makes that decision. I had a seven figure PR and ad agency. You could line up all my clients. I worked with a lot of trade associations and guess what? There could be 10 trade associations in my wheelhouse, but there's two who are going to buy from me because those people at those trade associations are the one who make the decisions. They're the ones who sign off. So we start with the who and we radically and aggressively identify that who, that ideal client. Then we look and say, well, what does that ideal client want? What does that ideal client want? Not what does that ideal client need? There's a difference between want and need. And as I often say, Elon Musk shares, sells a shit ton of Teslas to people who don't give a rat's ass about sustainability and being green. And if he sat there and said, well, they need to focus on that. And I'm going to talk about that all the time. Guess what? He wouldn't sell as many cars. So he knows what they want. They want a status symbol. They want the bulletproof glass on the cyber truck. They want zero to 60 and 1.7. They want a self-driving car. So he, he talks about and communicates what they want. That is very important. So you define your your who, the ideal client, you reverse engineer that. What do they want? You put together a very clear and compelling impact story message that speaks to what they want from you. And that impact story, yes, what you do and your why is important, but you align your why with the why of your client. You start communicating that on a regular basis. And listen, if you want to learn more about how you can deliver that right message to the right clients so you can generate the right revenue. I'm going to put a link in the comments right now. That webinar, by the way, is June 17th and it is at 7 p.m. Eastern. I'm putting a link right now if you're interested. I just put a link for everyone out here joining us on LinkedIn. There's a link in the comments, but join us June 17th, 7 p.m. Eastern, right message, right clients, right revenue. Learn how to define, learn the importance of defining that who, reverse engineering it, aligning your why with your client's why and communicating that on a consistent basis because it all is about consistency. Consistency beats intensity. Consistency communicating. I don't care how you communicate. And I know a lot of you, you go and you, you listen to the vanity vendors and you become these artists and create wonderful videos and you can't figure out why you're not getting clients. The tools and the technology come later. Build that strong foundation of who the hell are you serving and what do they want from you? You start there, otherwise 
It's garbage in, garbage out. Let's see, who else is joining us right now? I see a number of people joining us. Again, welcome. We're here on the back porch in the Sedona area of Arizona. We're going through the topics you see on the screen. If you would like help delivering the right message to the right clients to generate the right revenue, guess what? Across the bottom of the screen, text you authority to 55678. Not only can you get in touch with me that way, but guess what? There's some free stuff there. Three free webinars, including four pillars of building an authority brand. Attention, accuracy, alignment, and authenticity. There's some other free webinars there. By the way, speaking of webinars, there's a live webinar, June 17th, 7 p.m. Eastern. There's a link down in the comments, right message, right clients, right revenue. Listen, if you don't want to grow revenue, that's fine. If you like spinning your reels, don't come on the webinar. If you just want to learn how to make uh, cool logos and stuff, don't come on the webinar. But if you want to learn how to define who your ideal client is, what they want, align your why with their why, consistently communicate that to generate the right revenue. Click that link in the comments. By the way, a number of people are joining us here. Thank you, everyone who is joining us. By the way, if you haven't shared your name, your city, your state, your town, we got John Campbell from Clean Good Repetition of the Short Code. <laughs> Thank you, John. Appreciate it. And by the way, I call. When you text, I call. I actually pick up the phone. I'm intentional. People are surprised when I pick up the phone and I call. And oh my gosh, I run into so many people. They want to sell, but they don't want to have human conversations. They want to sit back. Everything is about a funnel and build that funnel. You know, sit back and, and, and automate it. And they don't want to have human conversations. Listen, I know that works for some people. I know it doesn't work for a lot of people when they've been sold a bill of goods. I have no compunction about picking up the phone and calling people. Did a webinar two days ago, and yesterday morning I called through the people who were on the webinar. They were shocked. I got three proposals out because of my follow up, the fortunes in the follow up. Don't be afraid to have conversations. Benjamin, great point. Kurt Mercadante, thank you. And by the way, if you haven't done it, share your name, your city, your state, your town, your location, where in the world you're joining us from. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time it is, wherever you're joining, it's it's about 6.23 a.m. here in Sedona, Arizona, having some coffee on the back deck. We got Oak Creek out here. I'm hearing the birds. You might hear the birds in the background. I want to thank you for joining us for volume two of the Back Porch Session. And this is going well, so we're going to be back hopefully next week. Unless my family has something else going on. So let's go to topic number three here. Where are we at? I, I couldn't be a weatherman. The second most common question I get from potential clients Maybe next week we'll talk about the first most common question. But that second most common question I get, I got in a number of times this week, which is, well, have you worked specifically with a business like ours in our industry? I hear that all the time. Oh, well, I'm an X industry. You haven't worked with my industry. I'm a consultant doing X, Y, Z. And what's, what's my, listen, some of those people won't hire me because they specifically want someone that's working in their industry. But here's the, here's the, here's the response I give. I've been doing this for 25 years. I'm not a brain surgeon, but guess what? I know how to brand, I know how to market. And by the way, you know what I know how to do? I'm like a lot of coaches out there. I've actually built businesses. I built a million dollar business. Every business I build is profitable, very profitable in fact, and I build them from scratch. You know, a business is your thoughts turned into ideas, turned into actions, manifested as a business. I'm very good at doing that and helping people do that, doing it with a sense of freedom. But one thing I've learned is that timeless business practices work regardless of industry. Basic communications principles work regardless of industry. Basic laws of the universe are not different because you're a lawyer versus an accountant versus a consultant versus anything else. Guess what? People buy for the same reasons. They want something from you. And everyone thinks, no, I have to go in. You know, I'm a big, big uh, in, in uh, the Tao Te Ching. I read the Tao Te Ching every morning. They talk about the yin and the yang. And the yin is that feminine energy. It's like the valley. They talk about the valley being so powerful in the mountains because everything flows to it. But the yang, that's that masculine energy. I'm going to go and I'm going to go and I'm going to go. Neither one is right or wrong, but you have to balance it. My friend Jason Gregory, Eastern philosopher and author, says we live in a yin-deficient world. 
And so too many people think it's all about the adrenaline and the coffee and sell, 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 and go on top of people. You got to balance the yin and the yang. Now, I'm kind of digressing here. The reason I talk about that is this. I don't care what industry you're in. I don't care if you're an accountant, a financial advisor. I talked to someone yesterday who's building a company based around art therapy for people who go through anxiety and stress, art therapy. Guess what? The same communications principles apply. Timeless principles are timeless principles. Who is your ideal client? What do they want from you? Speak to that on a regular basis, but it's easy to get shiny object syndrome. I remember, gosh, this is probably maybe 12 years ago, I had a client when I had my, my agency and they said, well, what's our Google Plus strategy? I don't know if you remember when Google Plus came. Guess what? Google Plus is a tool. It is a tactic. It's like a hammer. You're not building a house. You take a hammer and say, all right, first, what's our hammer strategy? Of course not. You have a blueprint. It is a tool. Twitter's a tool. LinkedIn's a tool. YouTube's a tool. Facebook's a tool. Whatever it is. And you decide the tools that are best to build the house. But you got to build that blueprint first. You got to define going back to the first. Don't let the tools and the tactics drive your strategy. Oh my gosh, there's a difference between strategy and tactics. Don't let the tactics drive you because people who do that, they go right off a cliff. Remember, to sum it all up, it's defining where you want to go. It's reverse engineering that and then choosing the tools to get there. But whatever industry you're in, basic communications principles are basic communications principles. I've worked in so many industries over the last quarter century, but I hear that all the time. Well, you haven't worked with X. Are the basic principles of human communication somehow different? Of course not. The tools may change, but basic principles stay the same. So with that, listen, whether you joined us live I, or whether you're joining the, the replay of this later today or in five minutes or wherever, however the hell this works, I want to thank you for taking some time out of your day, out of your morning, whatever time it is where you are to spend some time with me and the others here. Thank you for your comments. Whether you're joining the replay, still, still, you're not off the hook. Jump in. Whether you just joined us now, what's your first name? I don't care what your last name is. If you want to put that too. Your name, your city, your state, your town, where in the world you're joining us from. One of the best things about doing these is we get people around the country. We get people across the world. We had uh, India last time and we've gotten, e we've had Egypt on here across the country. We get regularly get Canada. Where in the world you're joining us from and one thing you are grateful for. And if you're watching the replay of this, you're not off the hook. With that, we're going to know in the remaining time, we got a couple minutes here. I don't have anywhere to be right now. Let me know if you have any remaining questions in the link. By the way, right here across, you could text you authority to 55678, get some free stuff, some free webinars, including four pillars of building an authority brand. There's a link in the comments. Sign up for our right message, right clients, right revenue webinar. Learn how to deliver the right message to the right clients. It's that simple. Click on that link. It's June 17th at 7 p.m. Eastern. And I'm going to throw it out to you. Any questions this morning? Who's got some great, incredible, abundant plans this weekend? Let's start there. What are you doing this weekend? John, what are you doing this weekend? Benjamin, what are you doing this weekend? Joseph, Joseph, Joe, Miller, what are you doing this weekend? Stephen, is Grady here? Whatever, what are you doing this weekend? What do you got? What do you got plans? Dave Quinn, you're probably uh, opening up some new office buildings. By the way, Dave, I'm going to message you because I have a question about, if you're still here, David, I have some questions about uh, about Mexico. I know you were in Mexico. My wife and I were wondering about it and restrictions and, and going back and forth and COVID and all that. So, Manuele, congratulations! Thank you, thank you, Tim, Doctor Tim. I appreciate it. I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a ring on Monday. Thank you. Any other questions here today? By the way, you can throw your questions in here even when I'm gone because I come back and I'll answer them throughout the day. You got your honeydew list. Yes. Yes. That's wonderful. <laughs> I was going to go hiking. I don't know if I'm going to go hiking this morning. Here in Sedona, uh, the weekends get crowded and hiking is, is crazy. And so you can't get parking. So I do it during the week. Watching from Atlanta, Majida. Watching from Atlanta. Thank you for joining us. Hey, Jennifer, I'm speaking virtually today and tomorrow. I'm hosting a kid's birthday for my nieces. Happy birthday to your nieces. I, I, I don't believe in luck. But go out, best wishes, and crush your speech today and tomorrow. That's great. Congrats on that. 
Minimal, minimalizing my things. Joe Miller, that's great. And Joe, you know that one of my favorite quotes, maybe my favorite quote is from Bruce Lee when they asked him, what's the secret to your success? He said, the secret to my success is not the daily increase. It's the daily decrease. He said, hack away at the unessential because the closer you get to the source, the less wastage there is. And with that, I want to thank you all for joining me here today for the Back Porch Session Volume 2. We're going to be back next week for Volume 3 because this went well. I'll tag you if you were here today so you don't miss it. Dr. Tim will give you a call. I want to thank all of you for joining us today. My name is Kurt Mercadante. My website is merc.enterprises. Don't forget, text you 30 to 55678 if you want some free resources to help you deliver the right message to the right clients to generate the right revenue. Go paint the house. Joe, I will see all of you on LinkedIn later.